Hello friends and welcome to another video from Meloncast in which I will tell you some new amazing stories. But before we begin, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button on this video. Also, don't forget to write your thoughts about these stories in the comments. Let's get started. Boss and HR started dramatically screwing up my life and my project says that people are tired of me taking notes in my notebook. They definitely forgot who I am and now I quit. I started with this company in mid-2015. At first, everything seemed fine. My boss and their boss were both acceptable and supportive, and I even got some out-of-the-blue bonuses in the form of sports tickets a couple times. All was going well until I finally graduated with my master's degree that I'd been working on during the weekends and evenings. I invited everyone on my boss's staff to come out with me for a couple of drinks to celebrate on a Friday after work at a local bar that I had been to for small team get-togethers a handful of times. I arrived at the bar after work and had a beer, then another, then a third. Nearly two hours after the business had closed, not a single person showed up. It was super bizarre, but I figured, hey, as happens. As I was cashing out, one of my coworkers walked in and told me she was the last one off campus. I told her I'd been there alone for a couple hours. She had a drink while I sat and drank a glass of water, and she let it slip that my boss had subtly suggested to a couple of other people on the team that they not show up because he didn't want people celebrating a personal, non-work-related achievement as an unofficial company event. I was furious! We talked for a while and then I left about 40 minutes later. The following several months, there was a dramatic change in behavior and attitude toward me by my boss, his boss, and most notably, HR. Suddenly, my hours as a salary employee were being hawked. I got told I wasn't allowed to take long lunches even if I showed up early or worked late. I was told that I had to work specific hours instead of flexing my hours around. The straw that finally broke the camel's back, though, was when my project came under fire. I had been leading a project for about four months to optimize the use of our most expensive and highest volume raw material, which had then led to some changes of our production lines that required a bunch of facilities work to be done. I had weekly check-ins specifically about this project with my boss, who had never mentioned anything about being concerned about the results or progress up to this point. In fact, he was so impressed with the results, he had given me MLB tickets a couple of months into the project. I had documented several instances of me asking him whether to involve one specific person in one of the areas, as they seemed concerned about not being included. We'll call this person uh, HMT. But he kept brushing it off as a non-issue, and told me to keep driving on without involving HMT. Now, I was quite bitter about only one person showing up to celebrate my graduation with me, and the person that did show up, she and I had built a bit of a rapport, or so I thought. I told her I was considering asking for a pay raise and, if it wasn't approved, looking for another job because of how much higher my earning potential was after my master's degree. I specifically said, I think this company needs me more than I need them at this point because there are no shortages of open positions for someone with my skill set and bona fides. Two days later, I'm called into HR. The HR person tells me that they're getting complaints from other employees about me discussing being unhappy with my pay and specifically mentioned me saying, the company needs me more than I need them. I said, well, I'm the only person here that does my kind of work and the project I've completed has saved the company four times my salary every year going forward. So yeah, I'd say that I'd be more than capable of getting paid more with that kind of job performance. And I wasn't happy with my pay since I had produced massive results and now had a master's degree. They said, yeah, that's the other thing. No one cares about your master's degree and you're not getting a raise because of it. So stop talking about it. In that moment, I was shocked, but it was apparent they weren't concerned about keeping me as an employee. So I got a bit antagonistic. I pulled out the notebook I always carried with me to meetings, clicked my pen, and said, in as calm of a voice as I could, is it your personal position or the position of the company that I not discuss my compensation with other employees? They responded, the companies. I said, can I have that in writing, right now, please, so that I can reference it as part of the company's policies? They went bright red, as red as I've ever seen someone. They said, this meeting is over. I responded, so that's a no then? They repeated, this meeting is done. 
I got back to my desk and immediately sent an email to the HR representative and their boss, referencing the meeting on the calendar and documenting what was discussed, along with the abrupt end to the meeting. I got no response. Several days later, I was working on my project and was approached by HMT, stands for Homophobic Mullet Technician, asking why I wasn't including them in my project. I said that I had asked my boss about it and was told he had other priorities and didn't need to be included. He proceeded to yell at me, and I said, hey, listen, you can be upset with me, but I have no power here. If you want to be included, you have to go through the person with authority who told me specifically not to include you, which is my boss. He proceeds to storm off, saying, I don't need to take this S from some F in front of a room full of people. I was blown away. I picked up my things and immediately went to the HR office and demanded a meeting with my boss, HMT's boss, and HR. The meeting happened within about 10 minutes. I told them what happened, and they said they would investigate. A week went by with no news, and my boss shows up to my desk and asks why I haven't been working on my project for the last week. I told him I wasn't going to work in the vicinity of someone that had used a homophobic slur at me, and that the company was yet to take action. I then said, so how is the investigation progressing? He said he didn't know and he would get back to me. Another full week went by before I was pulled into a meeting with HR where they told me they had interviewed the other person and that person denied saying that to me. I said, it took you two weeks to have one conversation where that person denied saying what a room full of people heard them say clear as day? Have you talked to anyone who was in the room? They said they decided not to do that and closed the investigation. I told them they needed to reopen it and talk to the people who are in the room. They begrudgingly agreed, I got up to leave and they said there was another matter to discuss. They proceeded to say that me not working on the project for two weeks was unacceptable and that I would be on a performance improvement plan. Code for, we're taking steps to cover our A for when we fire you. I said that this was clearly retaliation and that it wasn't my fault that they took two weeks to have a single 10 minute discussion and that I was not comfortable returning to an environment where I had been harassed based on a protected class in our state and forcing me to do so violated my rights as an employee. They were again livid. Another two full weeks went by during which time I had several interviews for other positions and my boss calls me into a meeting with himself and HR to say that he wasn't seeing improvement per the PIP. I said, well, it's going to be difficult to see improvement when I'm not working on the project because the company has failed to take appropriate remediating action regarding my harassment complaint. He said that was a separate issue and that I don't get to keep using it as an excuse. I asked whether HMT would still be present in the area where my work project needs to be done and he said yes, of course, and that I needed to include him in the project and should have from the start. I pulled out my notebook and proceeded to cite at least a dozen different instances where we met and I asked whether HMT should be included and pointed out that he, my boss, always said not to include him. He was peed and said, People are awfully sick of you taking notes all the time in your little notebook and then using those notes against us later. I was so shocked at the stupidity that I just laughed. He told me to sign my PIP update. I declined. He said he wasn't asking. I said that my signature is voluntary and I won't be signing that paper. And he ended the meeting. An hour later, to the minute, I got a phone call from one of the places I'd interviewed offering me another job for 40% more money, more vacation, better incentives, and a relocation package to ensure my commute was 20 minutes or less. I immediately accepted. They sent the formal offer letter via email, I signed it and sent it back. I proceeded to write my resignation letter and print off three copies. One for me, one for HR, and one for my boss. In the letter, I gave a month's notice. Probably stupid, but I was younger and didn't know better. I walked into my boss's office, gave him the letter, said I was resigning, okay, XYZ date, because of a better offer, and that I would not consider a counteroffer because of how poorly they handled the situation with HMT. I then said, to be completely clear, I actually like the work here as far as work goes. I only started looking because the company, you and HR specifically, retaliated against me after making a complaint that you are fully aware was legitimate. Tomorrow is Friday and I'll be taking it as a vacation day. That weekend was incredible. I felt so free and alive. I didn't think about work a single time. On Monday morning, my alarm went off. I turned it off, rolled over, called the sick leave line, and went back to sleep until nearly noon. On Tuesday, 
I showed up to work an hour and a half later than I was supposed to and was called into HR for the final time. They said they were terminating me effective immediately. I asked whether they got my letter. They said no. I walked to their inbox, pulled it out, put it on their desk and said, I dropped this in your inbox on Thursday. There's the date. Oh, and I noted that I did so in my trusty notebook here, so you can terminate me if you like, but you will be paying me through the last date on that resignation letter, which is the second of the month, and my benefits will continue through the entirety of that month. They were fuming! I gathered my things, left the site for the last time, and got three paychecks over the next five weeks while not working. Holy cow, what a foolish thing to do, forbidding employees to come to a private party on their own time? Perhaps they were afraid of losing their influence among their subordinates, or maybe they wanted to increase their influence. Look how powerful we are, forbidding you to do your own things in your free time. The OP did the right thing by quitting. The funny thing is that they had to keep paying him for doing nothing. You could consider it payment for their torment, but the truth is, alas, those three salaries will hardly repay the nerve spent. I hope he creates a tendency in the company to quit, and people will stop putting up with this kind of bullying and just leave. Let these bosses work for themselves. If work doesn't give you a feeling of freedom and being alive, you don't need it. Think of yourself, not your bosses and their wallets. Our last story is... Neighbor, a former police officer, forbids us to use the hill and later planted a wall there. Well, my father is a lawyer and it is actually our land. My parents' house is on top of a hill and our backyard had an awesome downhill for sledding. The hill had like two or three big trees on it but was otherwise clear. We moved in when I was two or three. The bottom of the hill was this flat space with a bunch of dead trees and rocks. Every day, for about 10 years, my dad moved the dead trees into the nearby woods and tossed every rock he could find over there. By the time we were old enough to sled, we could do so safely and the place was a great area to sled. This particular chunk of land was unallocated and part of no plot. Strictly speaking, given local laws, my father caring for the unallocated land for 10 years with proof, that land got absorbed into our plot slash ownership. Well, at some point halfway through, the neighbor at the bottom of the hill builds this huge ugly metal fence enclosing his part, which was his yard and a third of the cleared area. That was annoying, but whatever. Well, he yelled at us any time we played in the other spot or sledded down the hill. He was a former police officer and he had two dogs that were retired police dogs. Why were these dogs retired? They were considered overly violent. How do we know this? Because he likes to brag about it. His reasoning for why we shouldn't play there was because it would drive his overly violent dogs nuts. We ignored him and kept playing. Well, one summer, to discourage us from sledding in the winter, he planted a wall of trees along the bottom of our hill. These were all maybe six to eight feet tall with just trunks an inch or two wide. We just shrugged and kept sledding, killing the trees in our way. A bit of a D move on our part perhaps, but amusingly enough, it turns out the spot he planted the trees was actually part of our plot. It wasn't on the unallocated spot, so when he threatened to sue, my dad, a lawyer, just laughed and pointed it out. The guy basically gave up after that point, except that whenever he saw us playing back there, he let the dogs out into the yard. So we'd be playing soccer or whatever, meanwhile those dogs were constantly sticking their snouts through the fence, growling and snapping at us. Uh, whoa, that, uh, weird story. What right does a former police officer have to use police dogs that have been retired because they're too violent? Especially since the land doesn't belong to him. I believe this is a kind of abuse of power. As far as I'm concerned, even if he didn't say, I'm a former police officer, who are you? He was showing it with his appearance and actions. I believe that a police officer is first and foremost a protector of humanity. So he should remain that way after he retires. Or at the very least, he should stay human. Friends, Thank you for watching this video. Just a reminder, subscribe, like, and comment. See you soon.